and welcome to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast, where we invite you to spend a few minutes with the staff here at Cook Library. I'm Nate Goss, librarian and your host. This episode is being recorded in our Cook Park Digital Studios, where you are also invited to book time and see your next creative project come to life. But for the episode today, we are talking local history. And I'm here with our local history librarian, Jenny Berry. Welcome, Jenny. Hi, Nate. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. It's early. (laughs) <laughs> it is. You <laughs> so, had your coffee already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jenny does a lot of work and research preserving the rich history of Libertyville. And today we're going to get just a glimpse at what that looks like and also maybe hear some interesting examples and stories. Uh, so, Jenny, why don't we just start off with a simple question. Uh, you are the local history librarian here. You're also um, a member of the Historical Society. Mm-hmm. Do you want to just, you know, what is your role here at the library with local history? So it's really twofold. One is to kind of curate our local history collection. Um, so there's local history books, which are also ordered by Sonia Schoenfield, who's one of my colleagues. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we recommend books back and forth to each other. Uh, another big thing is our local history clippings file or subject file. We have over 700 subject folders in our files focused on Libertyville people, places, buildings, farms, churches, housing developments, events. Um, and those are news articles that we found over the years. Uh, they might be original pamphlets uh, or copies of pamphlets, say, from a church anniversary, just kind of a combination of things. And what makes it useful is if someone comes in and says, I'm interested in, say, the Proctor Building, which is the building that Runner's Edge is currently in, we can go to our files, pull the folder, and they can quickly get some information. If they need to go beyond that, we have a newspaper index, we have microfilm, we've digitized our local history uh, newspapers up to 1922. So, I try to get the information as easily accessible and as widely accessible as possible. Is it mostly Libertyville people doing this research, or you do get do you get people all over that just have something that they're on the hunt for, and somehow Libertyville comes up on the radar, and they come and contact you about needing some details on something? It could be either. I mean, it tends to be more local uh, people. Uh, for example, even the village of Libertyville, who's working on their historic preservation survey right now, we've been assisting the consultant that they have uh, researching the different downtown buildings. She's come in and looked at maps and the local history file and and those types of things. We often get requests from out of town, though, and often it's often genealogy related as Hmm. well. Um, They're looking for information on their family, and either Sonia or I can help them with that. And sometimes it goes off in a little other direction when they find out something about their family and they want to know how it ties into a building or an event that took place in Libertyville. Um, Do you have any uh, examples of maybe something recently that would give us an idea of of what this looks like, you know, when when you've got a project that you're given that's uh, local history related? Sure. Well, for example, even just this week, uh, we had a request, and I'm not sure where the person was located because a lot of these requests come in through email. Um, They were researching their uncle, and on Find a Grave, which is a website where you can search for where people are buried, They had found their uncle, and someone had posted an obituary and what looks like an article from a local paper that had mentioned that a memorial library had been started in their uncle's honor, who had been killed in a a car accident. And they'd been trying to find out where this library is. Well, from my reading of it, I didn't really think of it as a physical place, but more of a collection of materials. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, And it said that the library had been left at a particular person's farm. Uh, I was able to locate where that farm was. And it Um, was in Libertyville? It was, just north of Libertyville. Um, I had found them in the phone book in the right time. And the problem was I couldn't find any mention of the library. Um, I looked at the obituaries for the farm owners. um, And what actually ended up happening is I was able to identify a descendant Hmm. of the people at the farm and track them down in uh, nearby Wakanda. And called up them and left a message saying, hi, are you a descendant of this family? And they called me back and said, yes, that was my father. And uh, the person uh, couldn't think of the library that I was talking about. And I thought, okay, well, that's the end of that. Well, meanwhile, she had called her son in Missouri, who uh, then called me and said, well, I have some things of my grandfather's. um, And I'll look through them and see if there's any information there. Uh, again, he called back, and unfortunately, he didn't find anything there. So our local history questions don't always end up with a good uh, happy ending result. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we now have contacts with people who have Libertyville roots, 
um, whom actually I might meet this weekend because the son's going to be in town for a class reunion. Oh. Um, and the other thing is, now that the question's in front of me, I never forget a question. Hmm. So oftentimes for local history, you find things six months, a year later, when you're looking for something else. And now that I have that question in my mind, if I ever come across information on this person or this library, I will contact the person. Right. It's almost like you're, you've got these case files. That exactly. You've got. And, and it, it does kind of have an investigative feel to Completely. it. Like You're, you're kind of like the Sherlock of the library if you've got this weird mystery of Libertyville. You'd be like one of the first people you'd want to go to and figure out, you know, is there any validity to this? Or, you know, I've heard about this place. Did it ever even actually exist? Right. And, you know, and those actually cool. are some, yeah. some of my favorite questions. Um, yeah. One of the first research questions I did when I was here, which ended up as a presentation, was the legend of the gate. People of a certain age in Libreville will know what the legend is. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell it. The gate that's up on uh, River Road, north of Peterson Road. Okay. Should I have some spooky music in the background? You maybe? should, because it, yeah. really, it definitely has a Halloween <laughs> vibe to it. Um, I remember when I was in high school, and I won't tell you when that was, um, <laughs> there was this rumor that if you drove up to the gate, uh, especially on Halloween or around midnight, you would see these heads on the gate, on the oh. spikes of the gate. There's an iron and uh, stone gate there. And so the you know stories were that there had been a school there and the principal or a nurse or somebody had gone crazy and killed the kids and put their heads on the on the stakes. All right here in Libertyville. Exactly. <laughs> and of course there's no newspaper coverage of it all. So it was a conspiracy, it's a conspiracy to, to yeah. cover it up. Exactly. Scandal. Yeah. Um so I did a lot of research on it and um you know, try to find out if there was any validity to it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that there was an orphanage there and kind of in a oh. summer camp along the way. So there were definitely children there and counselors and prince and maybe not a principal, but a, you know, headmistress yeah. or something like that. Um, as far as I could tell, if it's covered up, it's really covered up. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see how that that myth might have or legend might have got started because it, if you have kids there, but those are kids that tend to maybe be in and out a lot. Right. It's not like residents of Libertyville. You could conjure up a story pretty quickly around right. that. Well, and if you're driving around that area, there's this stone gate that leads to nowhere because all the buildings that were there before mm. have been torn down and yeah. it's forest preserved behind the gate. So. What was behind the gate? Why is it gone? <laughs> and if you're on the path through that area, you can sometimes see like a fire hydrant yeah. out in the middle of this forest wow. preserve. So I can see there's a lot of reasons why just strange that would start, there. but that's probably the biggest urban legend of Libertyville. You know, you're also a member of the Historical Society. Mm -hmm. How does the Historical Society relate to the library and what we do with local history? Well, historically, the Historical Society actually started as an affiliate of the library in 1955. And then it turned out that the librarian at that time just couldn't handle all of the donations and everything that was coming in. So a you know, board of was set up for the Historical Society. So we're still very closely related. We're pretty much attached to the hip because we the cookhouse are. is, right. is so, attached to the library. Right, so many yeah. people probably don't know there's a what I you know a secret passage um, from the cookhouse to the library. There's We call it the link. It's not really that secret, but it it's a, a door in the library that most people wouldn't know. They might think it goes to Narnia. Right, it exactly. It goes to a cookhouse. Closet, <laughs> something like that. Um, but really, because the cookhouse was originally the library um, from 1921 until 1968, when the current library was built, to maintain the spirit of Mr. Cook's will, which had hoped that his house would become a library, at least in general. There's more details to that. Sure. But there was a connection built so that in spirit, the cookhouse is still kind of part of the library. Hmm. Uh, but the cookhouse is actually owned by the village, um, and the historical society are the stewards of the house. Um, the big difference between the Historical Society and the library's collections is that the library's collections are published material in general. They're not original material. Like artifacts or exactly. you know, actual physical items. Right. Yeah. And that's where the cookhouse is. Uh, archives, which are in the basement, um, are a little different. They're going to have original photographs, original postcards, um, objects, um, some documents, things like that. Hmm. Um, so now if you come to the library's webpage, you will find a link to the Illinois Digital Archives, which the library, in partnership with the Historical Society, has scanned about a 1,000 items from the Historical Society's collections. But the items are in the Historical Society's collections, not in the library. So the originals are located next door. So if someone listening to this really did kind of, you know, if they're a Libertyville resident or maybe they're even just new to Libertyville and want to get to know the town a little bit more, and they want to dig into that rich Libertyville history, 
uh, where would they start? Where would they go? Would, uh, you know, wh- how would you guide them to get started in this? First of all, I'd point them to our local history page on our website because there's a lot of things that you can get at least a basic knowledge of just from reading through some of the things on that page. We also do online exhibits where we have highlighted uh, particular things like businesses. Uh, we have a wedding dress collection, for example, in the cookhouse. Um, there's this gentleman, C.E. Carroll, who was an original member of the Historical Society who wrote a number of essays about Libertyville, and we've put about 10 of them online. Mm. So just looking for some basic history, start at the local history page. Um, and also off that page is our blog, The Past is Present. Yeah, and there's some great – that I love reading the blog stuff because it's written so well, and, and they're just little – uh, almost just many histories in themselves uh, within right. Libertyville, and they're really well researched, and there's pictures and everything, and you just kind of get this really a new perspective on the town you live in. You know, it is. We have there's three of us, um, Joe, Sonia, and I, who rotate writing those, and I have to tell you that a lot of times those are inspired by just our local history subject folders. So yeah. you say. You know, for example, the most recent one is St. Sava. Yeah, I so, read that the yeah. other day. It was a great, great little article. Yeah. yeah. And most of the research from that came directly from the materials we already have in-house. Hmm. Um, so I would start there. Um, and then I would actually, I wouldn't necessarily come in and just try to go through the materials. It's really important, I think, to talk to myself or if I'm not available, Sonia, because we know what are in the materials. Mm-hmm. It's nice to have the physical collections but a lot of the knowledge is in our heads as well, and so you can you know, we can make those connections for you. And I'm and I'm hoping uh, as we continue with this podcast that we're going to have you and Joe and Sonia on to just share some of these stories as well, sort of have an audio history of some of this stuff going on. So yeah, also just great. keep keep listening to the podcast. Yeah. So I mean, aside from the the more recent story that you've already told us, um, do you maybe have some a few other stories of just ways in which people have been really impacted by what you do here at the library with local history? Yeah, I think the two things that I really like about doing this job, one is the research, because that's why I got into librarianship in the first place. I love that investigative part that we talked about. But the other part is the impact that you can have on people. And you may not know it when you start the research, but sometimes we get letters and thank yous that tell you that it meant much more to the person than you thought. Hmm. So um, we had a local resident who had a friend whose husband had recently died. And for some reason, it had become very important to this friend to know where her husband was born. And she knew that her husband had been born on the MacGuffin farm, but didn't have a good sense of where that was. And we were able, through the maps that we have in our collection, to pinpoint where that was uh, when her husband was born. Um, And also provide her some uh, information about the MacGuffin family, just so she knew Hmm. uh, who that was. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to read a brief note from her. Thank you. Uh, It said, in the process of mourning my Bob, not knowing where the farm he was born on seemed huge to me. Why he didn't come up over the years is weird. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the research, et cetera, you did for us. I hope to meet you when I get back to Libertyville next time. She said, my dear friend, who now considers you one of hers, couldn't say enough about how you helped her 100% on researching my quest. Both of you deserve a medal. <laughs> yeah, so You're doing very important work, I feel know, like. It, you know, there's preservation involved, and we can sometimes get so focused on the new and the innovative and, and what's next, you right. know. And, and it's so important that we have people like you that take – that remember that we also need to really preserve this past because it's important. You know? It is, and it's what's unique to our library. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, it so is. We have, we have wonderful services, um, and we a lot of libraries have those services as well, and I think we do them as well or better than other libraries. Mm-hmm. But the only thing that we have in my is unique is our own history. Is Libertyville, yeah. Right, and, and so that makes our library unique and strong that we have such a focus and such an impact on people in that area. It's, it's fascinating stuff. Well, uh, thank, thank you so much, Jenny. And um, I'm hoping as people listen to this that they really got a good glimpse into what you do with local history and what the library does uh, with local history. So if you do want to dig into some of our local history collection, uh, as Jenny said, you'll just the first step would be to get in contact with her or not, and also to check out our blog and our website. Um, if people did want to get in contact with you, is the best way to email you or just call the library? Yeah, I would email. Um, I'm only part-time here, okay. so I'm only here half the week. Um, the easiest way to get a hold of me is uh, to send an email to jbarry at cooklib.org. Uh, and I will get back to you as soon as I'm in the library. All right. Thanks again, Jenny. So there you have it. That pretty much wraps up the episode. Uh, Thank you for listening. Uh, We also want to make sure that you don't forget to also visit Shelf Life, the library's blog, which does have the past is present on there, which is the local history. But it also has things like book reviews, um, genealogy tips, 
and other things about the studio and library happenings. If you ever want to get in contact uh, about this podcast or give us some feedback, you can always send us a message. Webmaster at cooklib.org is where you want to direct those messages. If you really enjoy this podcast, please keep spreading the word. And if you uh, do get a moment, please leave us a, a kind rating on iTunes. We will be back soon, but until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening.